Yes, thank you very much. Oh, there's a music in the background. Is that normal? Uh, not Hello? that I'm hearing any. So, doctor, please proceed. I don't. Uh, I'm not hearing. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let me get started then. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to share you know, with you know that side of the the, the region. Uh, it's a very a very exciting for me. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you some items. Uh, the agenda for the day will be an introduction. Here you will learn about the origin of this leadership framework called Agile Leadership with a Grip. The strategic hustler, the word hustler can take on many interpretations. Here you will learn the operational definition for the type of hustler whom I coin a strategic hustler. The strategic enablers. Here you will learn about the problem solving and solutions delivery mechanisms that contribute to being a strategic hustler. The strategic hustler framework. Here you will be exposed to the world-class leadership behaviors and management best practices that make you a strategic hustler. Question and answers. My aim is to make this an engaging presentation, so please ask questions uh, at the appropriate time. Experience gained from 40 plus year journey from the street room to the school room to the boardroom have enlightened me that dominant behaviors drive effective personal, professional, organizational, digital, data, and business transformation. So what I'm going to be sharing is not a detailed cookbook, but as with any framework, a more coherent and consistent structure that must be adapted to the specific situations using the experiences of the involved individuals. Though this framework can be applied to any leadership situation, the focus of this presentation will be on digital transformation or DT. I will also use interchangeably the term business transformation or BT, which puts business leaders in a position to help their companies exploit technology like never before. Research findings show that two-thirds of business leaders believe that their companies must pick up the pace in digitization to remain competitive. So it's no surprise that digital strategy and digital transformation are now board-level conversations. The broader and deeper use of technology in the enterprise creates an unprecedented, unprecedented opportunities for IT leaders. To all of the Great questions. Let's start with the operational definition, then a brief history. First, a hustler is an enterprising person who has the desire, discipline, and determination to succeed. Second, the etymology of the word hustle is from the Dutch hustlen, to shake to and fro, which is precisely the basis of my argument on what type of leadership is needed to deliver strategic execution in the 21st century. Let's swim a little deeper. The strategic hustler is a strategy thinking and enterprising person who has the desire to excel, discipline to learn, and determination to perform. They accept the challenge of chasing perfection and are only satisfied with catching excellence. They embrace change, the title acronym for creating a healthy and new growth to excellence because their character is comfortable with being uncomfortable. Their pride, the title acronym for passion, respect, integrity, discipline, and execution is driven by a strategic attitude, a strategic aptitude, and a strategic altitude to turn their dreams into reality. They are adept at applying the appropriate knowing and doing behaviors which requires being flexible or agile upfront in terms of their leadership behaviors and in control grip of their lives and the situation. Moreover, their spiritual connection drives their faith and courage to aim for the universe, press on, and never give up. The remainder of this presentation will take you on a journey that will uncover the value of being a strategic hustler in both knowing and doing. 
During this journey, the strategic attitude, strategic aptitude, and strategic altitude will be referred to as strategic thinking enablers. I will use the term new age leader and strategic hustler interchangeably. Of the strategic thinking enablers, having the right attitude is the most essential because it is here where decisions are made on which knowing and doing behaviors will be applied to gain the aptitude required to reach, reach and sustain the altitude. The components of the strategic altitude include strategy, posture, and culture. The graphic shows the attitude for four companies, Apple, Coca-Cola, Red Cross, and Ritz-Carlton. I will explain the intersection for each company and the appropriate component. Let's start with Apple, the strategy. Their strategy focuses on design, that is, they want the best design with a premium on new to the world thinking. Their posture is proactive, innovating ahead of the curve to meet unstated needs. Their culture, innovation. Innovation marked by a willingness to take risks with a long-term view designing products and service before customers know that they need them. The Coca-Cola Company. Their strategy focuses on produce. They want to produce consistently superior beverages along with marketing. Their posture, reactive, proactive, fast follow deploying overwhelming resources to co-opt others' innovation. Their culture, their culture is of discipline with a strong central control so Coca-Cola beverages taste the same everywhere and every time. The Red Cross, their strategy, delivery. They want the best delivery with emphasis on tactical flexibility. Their posture, proactive, reactive, pre-positioning resources to respond quickly when needed. Their culture, perseverance. Perseverance marked by a deep commitment to purpose making people willing to hurry up and wait over and over again. The Ritz-Carlton, their strategies on support. Best support empowering each employer to go do whatever it takes to solve any guest problem. Their posture, reactive, responding to others' needs. And their culture, flexibility in pursuit of extraordinary guest experience. Now, though my discussion has been directed toward the organization, it indirectly addresses the appropriate individual's behaviors because an organization cannot be what its people are not. I hope you enjoyed the lessons on the being a strategic hustler and the various attitudes. This lesson here will cover the strategic enablers. According to Dr. Kenichi Ome, a business strategist of international renown and author of numerous books, including the best-selling The Mind of the Strategist, quote, in strategic thinking, one first seeks a clear understanding of the particular character and each element of the situation and then makes the fullest possible use of human brain power to restructure the elements in the most advantageous way. Said another way, the strategic thinker arrives at a solution by transitioning through problem-solving phases, focusing on a solution that embraces transformation or change configuration. The next few slides contribute to learning the problem-solving solution delivery mechanisms that contribute to strategic thinking. I hope you enjoy the lessons. Strategic thinking enablers drive the strategic management process. An essential management tool to building and implementing a strategic management process is a strategic scorecard. Its application is part art and science. The art part is the human creativity and innovation enabled by a management system that's focused on the most important things, better informed decision making, improve operational efficiency, and organizational effectiveness. The art part also includes communication and change management. The science part is the strategic thinking that develops and connects the necessary elements into an integrated system for planning and managing more strategically. The science part also includes the discipline applied to of developing the scorecard system. These 14 unique pieces comprise the strategic elements of a company's strategic rudder. Later you will see how each contributes to the strategic planning and management process. My discussion on scorecards will be reserved to later when sharing information on best practices of the framework. 
A strategic partner helps the company become adaptable to survive and thrive change. Because of technology and the internet, ideas are emerging, resulting in almost every known business model in the process of being disrupted, reinvented, or reimagined. New products and services are emerging at a pace never before seen, and competition is no longer limited by geographical boundaries. No business model is completely immune to this disruption. But with this new disruption and competition comes massive new opportunities. It has never been easier to create new business models and to address national or global audiences. Having the capability in these disciplines allows you to contribute to enhancing your organization's performance and deliver better business outcomes in this global, new age environment. Said another way, the new age leader's aim is to be a contributing member of a high-performing, results-oriented, customer-driven team that consistently delivers customer value. An in-depth discussion of each of these disciplines is beyond the scope of this presentation, but I will share some insight on each. Let's start with the SCORE model. SCORE is the acronym for Supply Chain Operations Reference Model. Its emphasis is on the importance of thinking end-to-end -to, -end to identify strategic improvements to create business value. Lean principles implies eliminating waste within the end-to-end -end process. Six Sigma is a quality program that, when all is said and done, improves your customer's experience, lowers your costs, and builds better leaders. Let's look how a strategic hustler contributes to a digital transformation or DT effort. As successful digital companies, technology strategy equals business strategy. From an organization and business perspective, at the three levels of leadership, the strategic hustler is a key business enabler that uses the appropriate sphere of influence to deliver the promise and potential of DT. The digital vision is an adaptable business network to enable such goals as increased customer understanding and revenue growth, improving business process efficiency or empowering workers. The most sophisticated DT users must combine digital activity with strong leadership to become a winning digital company. Digital business is a team sport, which I can appreciate being a former athlete and a coach. Thus accomplishing this aim requires all hands on deck teamwork. The CEO sets the digital division the digital, digital vision, excuse me, which can cover five different paths, of which I, I'll talk about later, to allow the other C-level leaders to collaborate on it. Said another way, with DT work, it's not really a technology problem. It's a leadership responsibility. Leadership has to be flexible, guided by being agile, that is being adaptable, goal-oriented, intelligent, learning, and effective. They must be upfront in their daily interactions of leading people, that is, they look to change and challenge the status quo. They energize people with ever greater challenges. They acknowledge a burning platform. They deliver results through effective delegation. They exhibit emotional energy and edge. Respect diversity. Sustain success by achieving excellence. Have a teachable point of view. Introduce ideas based on uplifting values. And persevere with persistence. And finally, they must be in control and proactively managing goals, resources, interfaces, and performance. The three levels of leadership have a shared focus on implementing an extended value chain. This strategic execution impacts sales and optimization planning, supplier procurement planning and procurement, production planning and scheduling, Distribution planning and distribution, which is driven by customer demand and sales. Every transformation is different. The success depends on the complex interplay of actors in a multifaceted ecosystem. The new age leader has to understand the linkages among the management disciplines, leadership, culture, and communication, which allows the transformation process to be effective. These linkages can be understood using a business transformation management methodology, BTM squared. 
This methodology consists of eight management disciplines which are coherently integrated within the business transformation goal setting. The eight management disciplines are chosen in a logical way and are of two types. You have the directional type. The three disciplines of strategy management, value management, and risk management can be referred to as the strategy loop. Here, the transformary strategy is defined considering time and budget restrictions as well as associated risks. The enablement type encompasses the management and synchronization of changes ranging from IT through process to organizational, plus the creation of new competencies through training and education. All of that must be orchestrated through an organizational program management capability. The last of these is not about creating a super manager, but having people at all levels in the transformation who are well trained and knowledgeable about the transformation. Said another way, the new age leader must know how to deliver results through effective delegation. Enablement can also refer to as the feedback loop, where strategy is being implemented and lessons learned. This learning feedback leads to the adjustment of the transformation strategy. A key takeaway is that business transformation has to balance economic, social, and technical aspects. This requires the involvement of such fields as management, psychology, and IT, which are mirrored in the eight management disciplines. Every business transformation is an iterative process going through different phases in a recurring cycle. This big circle picture shows the phases and the iterative nature of the transformation life cycle. The graphic illustrates the four phases, engage, engage, envision, engage, transform, and optimize. Let me talk a little bit about each. Envision. This phase embraces the why of change. It is during this phase where the components necessary for successful change have to be articulated and communicated. Engage. This phase emphasizes the importance of the leadership behavior energize people with ever greater challenges. People must be mobilized by energizing, empowering, engaging them to focus on and work toward a common purpose. Transformation. The phase highlights the importance of having an end-to-end -end and universal strategy on shifting the enablers that support traditional business models to being able to support an adaptable business model embracing multi-enterprise commerce and collaboration. And finally, optimize. This phase indicates the importance of standardizing the new way of knowing and doing business, focusing on identifying strategic improvements, removing waste, and removing defects. The aforementioned management disciplines are involved in all stages of the life cycle model since almost any aspect from the transformation rationale to implementation options may need to be revisited as the transformation and business context evolve. The emphasis will be more on the directional disciplines in the early stages and the enablement disciplines later. A key point, over 70% of business transformation efforts find themselves in uncharted waters. The strategic hustler or new age leader has to engage in the six eyes of intelligent behavior to deal with often messy situations. When discussing the big orange picture or the digital vision, I indicated that success of, trans of the transformation depends on the complex interplay of actors in multifaceted ecosystem of adaptable business networks. For those of you in the audience who may not be familiar with this type of uh, diagram, this is called a super system map. Though it has the appearance of an electric circuit bar board, it is a picture of a business ecosystem detailing its components along with the appropriate strategic questions whose answers contribute to guiding the strategic planning process. Answer to these 11 questions. contribute to defining the 14 elements of the strategic rudder mentioned earlier. These specifics can be categorized as products and services being offered, customers and markets being served, competitive advantage, product and market priorities, and systems and structures. The outside-in perspective provides the navigation knowledge to improve on internally connecting the dots, which many strategic initiatives fall short on. 
this is a rhetorical question. Maybe you can answer it during the Q&A uh, uh, period. But how many of you know the answers to those 11 questions that I've just circled? If not, then you have your homework assignment. Effective leaders are strategists who know the way, go the way, and show the way. Many managers want to be leaders, and seasoned leaders have not realized this. This picture is the house of strategic execution. It shows where strategic elements mentioned early fit together. Think of it as a blueprint for the strategic framework. The high-level strategic elements form the roof. Strategic results are the lintel supporting the roof. Strategic themes are load-bearing walls supporting the lintel. Perspectives are represented by four floors. Critical success enablers form the foundation. Engaged leadership and interactive two-way communication are cornerstones of strategic planning and execution. Here, leadership has to be flexible, upfront, and in control. Being the ultimate team player, the strategic hustler contributes to defining the strategy, rallying the organization around that strategy, and helps drive the organization so that desired business outcomes are achieved. The resulting strategic framework cascades throughout the organization to create alignment or to allow people, processes, and systems to connect to the high-level strategy. The strategic blueprint that I mentioned provides a consistent and coherent approach to creating a blue ocean strategy. It must be applied by blue ocean strategy thinkers to get the desired results. Having an idea on what steals your organization plays a critical part during strategic planning. This strategic pyramid excuse me, highlights the BSI's, the Balanced Scorecard Institute's nine steps to success framework to create a strategy that is clear, deliberate, and focused. It also drives home the importance of knowing, going, and showing. As you can see, each floor in the pyramid asks a strategic question, which can be answered by knowing the answers to the aforementioned strategic rudder. Though a detailed discussion of each floor is beyond the scope of this presentation, a key takeaway is the strategic framework consists of three tiers and cascades throughout the organization to create alignment or how people, process, and systems connect to the high-level strategy. From the what to the how, leadership must be engaged in interactive communication to decide which projects add value to the company. Let's shift gears and go from the more abstract to a more concrete example. This graphic shows the strategy map for low-cost airline and the corresponding course scorecard metrics for each objective. We start off with the mission. We then move to our vision. Then we have a strategic theme, in this case, operational efficiency. We have a supporting strategy map which provides or tells us a cause and effect value creation story for each perspective to achieve the strategic theme. That is, this is what you must achieve in each of your respective areas in order to hit our strategic objective. What are those objectives? We have the objective column. Then we have the detailed objectives for each of the perspective. We have the measures column. Under the measures columns, we have the detailed measures for each perspective. We have our targets. This is what we're shooting for. This is what we're aiming for. Detailed target information. And then we have our initiatives. This is what has to be done. And here are our detailed initiatives. Executing the selected initiatives to deliver on a strategy requires having a proactive organizational project management capability. I call this the big multicolor picture. The purpose of this point is to drive home the fact that an organization must have a best-in-class project management capability to turn strategy into successful outcomes with predictability and consistency. As the chief business transformation officer for a major international city, I use this to communicate and educate the appropriate end of personnel on how project process and change management initiatives would be delivered. 
we have for each column we have the various process roles, process columns, excuse me, initiating, planning, executing and monitoring, and closing. And then for each of the column we have the various process threads and represented by the roles. Here we have project management. At the intersection it defines the tasks that have to be done. Process management and change management. Hopefully you enjoyed that the strategic enabling session. Now I'm going to talk briefly about the strategic behavior framework. One of my behaviors in giving back that I will talk about later was the volunteer as a lead researcher on the Project Management Institute's seminal research project entitled Project Managers as Senior Executives. Its purpose was to investigate the premise that experience as a program and project manager is desirable and useful as a preparation for assignment as a CEO or other senior level executive in large and medium sized businesses, industrial, governmental, and non governmental organizations. Participating in this project was beneficial in another way. It allowed me to fulfill a doctoral research opportunity to develop a leadership development model as a competency model that focused on cognitive skills in terms of strategic planning and problem solving, behavior, leading others, and communication skills emotional self-awareness and understanding others, and rational managing interpersonal skills. Here are essential soft skills that provided crucial to notching it upward and onward. We have leadership, team building, motivation, communication, influencing, decision making, political and cultural awareness, negotiation, trusted building, conflict management, coaching, and finally, again, right back to leadership. I'm going to summarize each of those behaviors into these soft skills, into three qualities of the Agile Leadership Framework. That is being flexible, being upfront, and being in control. My journey to life in bringing these, these behaviors of life and best practices, introduce the Agile Leadership with a Grip Framework. These experiences are shared in this text. This common theme shared by the financially successful leaders in this text is that, quote, leadership has nothing to do with how much money you make, but how you uplift and inspire others to achieve and promote greatness that leads to the betterment of others. A sample of leaders who appeared in this text include, but are not limited to, Dr. Yamil Jackson, shown here receiving award from Oprah Winfrey. The global process redesign and business transformation team for an international bank named Model Bank of the Year in the U.S. for being for implementing uh, modernized, implementing the largest banking transformation system in the U.S. in 15 years. Here we have the president of the Pakistan Information Security Association who spearheads Pakistan's cybersecurity initiatives. Dr. Sharinus Columbia and his senior management team at a war renewables, renew, renewable energy startup. Here we have a professional athlete who appears in the National Football League Hall of Fame here in the United States by the name of Floyd Little. Here we have stories from the senior management team of the P Pakistan Petroleum Corporation that, that is charged with increasing revenues from $2 billion to $5 billion in five years. Finally, the book is such as a practical and modern and applicable guide to leading and managing in the 21st century that it is required reading at the prestigious Cambridge Corporate University in Luzerne, Switzerland. Up until this point, I've been basically giving you informal dosages of you know, the leadership behaviors. Now I'm going to, at a very high level, uh, taking in consideration of time, provide a more detailed discussion. I will be sharing the excerpts from the book in, 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 in each of these discussions. Be adaptable. The elements of change. You recall change is creating a health, healthy and new growth to excellence. Change results from engaging leaders and other employees to think deeply about sharing vision, 
strategy, operations, budgeting, and alignment. Since implementing and, and sustaining any type of strategic performance system is an organization transformation, it presents an opportunity for organizations to take stock of the collective change required to meet new competitive challenges, regulations, and government directions, economic and world realities, and societal env environments. This diagram illustrates the components of change management and how missing components can lead to confusion, false starts, anxiety, restraint, and resistance, frustration, and apathy. The highlighted areas identify components that may be missing and the actual results. So if you're looking at the slide, we have if vision is lacking, we have confusion. If actionable strategy is lacking, we have false starts. If capability is lacking, we have anxiety. If we have incentives of lacking, we have restraint and resistance. If resources are lacking, we have frustration. And if we have urgency is lacking, we have apathy. The next behavior that I want to talk about is goal-oriented behavior. Okay, um, there what I, these are what I call the ten goals of success. Uh, Jack Welch, who's a well-known uh, leader, uh, leadership pundit, uh, states that before you're a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. Well, when you look at these goals of success, the first t six talk about growing yourself. The last four talk about growing others. That is, so we let's, let's touch briefly on the first six. Knowing the terrain. Seizing the opportunity. Okay, if you don't know the terrain, it's very difficult to seize an opportunity. Find a mentor. You may be trying to do something that you've never done before. Okay, one of my reasons in, uh, in terms of being a council member for, with GLG is that I give numerous phone con uh, consultations to various executives around the globe that are engaging in various types of business transformation, organization transformation, those kinds of things there. Okay, Find a mentor. Radiate zeal. Be excited about what you're doing. Work with tenacity. Give mind-boggling service. Now, if you do a poor job on the first six, it's going to make it very difficult for you to do the last four because you are, as the leader, are going to be the role model. So once you master those first six, then you're ready to build a team get more from less, notch it upward and onward, and give something back. Okay, the text goes into a lot more detail for, with each of these. Okay, and, and, and here is my take on this. Leader of one, leader of many, if you can't lead one, you can't lead any. Earlier I talked about the six eyes of intelligent behavior. Okay, now here's a more formal presentation of this. Okay, when we talk about six eyes, we talk about innovation. Okay, we owe our future to innovation. Insight. The 21st century, human beings are confronted with a daunting array of problems that demand new solutions. You know, we have to deal with climate changes, global pandemics, failed states, narco-crime, terrorism, nuclear proliferation, environmental degradation. Meeting these challenges requires us to invent new innovative solutions. We also have to deal with problems that are multidimensional and multi-jurisdictional. Initiative. Initiative, that's the alpha and omega of the successful principles that I talk about in the book. Influence. Influence has, comes in six types. There's reciprocity, commitment and consistency, social proofing, liking, authority, and scarcity. Interpersonal. Interpersonal speaks to speaks to our emotional awareness or emotional IQ. We look at self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and social man social skills. And I left the, the last integrity because I like to talk a little bit about integrity. Why? Because the number one characteristics that people want in their leaders to demonstrate is integrity. People who walk the talk and lead a life of character. To me, based upon my experience, integrity is more than simple honesty. It's more than being ethical. A person with integrity has the rare ability to pull everything together and make it happen no matter how challenging the circumstances. 
My life's journey has allowed me to cross paths with thousands of leaders from all walks of life who were men and women of integrity. They were honest and ethical people of integrity. Some were and some were not making it in some way. Sounds confusing? Let me swim a little deeper to talk about those who were not. While we would say that they were all people of good character, the reality is their personhood was still preventing their talents and brains from achieving all that was in their potential. Some aspects of who they were as people they'd never seen as important to develop were keeping them from reaching the heights that all of the other investments they had made should have afforded them. While they met the criteria of having quote unquote integrity, they also left behind a trail of falling short in some key areas of performance that left them, their stakeholders, and the people who depended on them wanting more. Let's talk a little bit about Blue Ocean Strategy as part of being intelligent behavior. Blue Ocean Strategy is not only applicable to large businesses, but also small and medium-sized businesses, which I will call SMBs. The concept is when you pursue differentiation low cost and stop benchmarking the competition, you set yourself up for strong growth because you don't have customers, you have fans. And you have a huge profit engine which gives you the resources to hire talent and invest in growth in your industry. As a Red Ocean strategist, many SMBs are so focused with their limited resources on surviving because they are playing that competitive game where they can't stand apart and can't drop their costs fast enough so they don't have the excess slack to create growth. A boss creates the slack to grow in a real powerful and compelling way. The only difference is that you won't stay small to meeting for long. You start to grow very fast. Given global competition, the only way SMBs will transition into larger businesses is to pursue differentiation low cost strategy. Simple benchmarking the competition is not going to create a winning strategy for the company with the low cost imports flooding our market and more established companies with deeper resource pockets. Boss is more appropriate because the social media technology, i.e. social networks, blogs, micro blogs, video sharing do one thing. They shift the power of the voice, influence, and credibility from the company to the individual. That means individual has a global megaphone to the world. As we begin to move, let's talk about learning behavior. Okay. I'm quite sure if you, you, you watch companies that are being you know, bought up or they're going out of business, one of the things that they said is we failed to change, we failed to keep up. Okay. Well, what I'm going to share with you is a cultural learning model that has brought me very success, a lot of good success, and also clients that I work with around the globe and students that I teach this to. Okay. Let me just walk you through this cultural model. Okay. The first thing is, your know, question is, what is the desired outcome of this cross-cultural situation? So you're asking, what is important? What is important? What are we trying to achieve? What are we trying to learn? Okay. What 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 are we what are we you know, and, and once you begin to, to, to understand that, then you can understand that it, 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 it proves very, very fruitful, okay, in using this model, okay? What is their way of doing things, okay? What is their way of doing things? What is our way of doing things? Which way is the best way, okay? If we choose our way, this is what happens. If we choose their way, this is what happens. If none of them are good, we still learn. We still learn. So what this does, okay, this 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 model here allowed creating relationships during the project that were more powerful than technical quality. Okay. Therefore, what I want you to be especially aware of is that of the non-invented here syndrome. The surest way of a great network player is their willingness to let go of their own standard, especially if it's superior and adopt someone else's to leverage the dynamics of the network. The effective leader must be agile to establish teams with winning characteristics from a small sense of purpose and progress to continuous learning, all of which are vital and must be presented. Okay, you may have noticed that the word successful has not been used. This was done purposely because strategic hustlers strive for greatness. Before achieving greatness, one has to be effective. This takes us to the final behavior of being agile. 
Let me say unequivocally, the path to greatness comes through being effective. I come to realize that greatness doesn't come from a tactical sense of execution. Greatness comes from having a vision that goes beyond yourself and even beyond the organization. So as you can see here, we have motivation, okay? We have, motiv we have excuse me, okay? We have motivation, okay? And the most important is leading by example. Leading by example. Okay, and you see inspire, inspiring, mentoring, and coaching. The key is being leading by example and generating that teamwork because at the end of the day, that's the way you win, teamwork. I'm going to touch briefly on the leadership behaviors. Again, I talked about these un informally early in the presentation. Now I'm going to get more formal with those, these. Okay, L, again, look to change and challenge the status quo. Energizing people with ever greater challenges. Okay? Again, looking to change and challenge the status quo, you always want to stay focused on the goal, the customer, and the organization. Okay? Energizing people with ever greater challenges. Well, ask yourself, what energizes me as a leader? If you can't answer that question, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to energize someone else. Acknowledge a burning, burning platform. In other words, what's the value proposition of doing nothing? Deliver results to effective delegation. The key to being effective with this is accountability. Being accountable. Exhibit emotional energy and edge. Remember we talked about in the 10 goals of success, radiating zeal, being excited, working with tenacity. Respect diversity. We live in a globalized society. Sustain success by achieving excellence. See your goals. Understand obstacles. Clear your mind of doubt. Create a positive mental picture. Embrace the challenge. Stay on track. Show the world that you can do it. Faithfully confess your goals. Understand that you have the victory and learn humility. Ladies and gentlemen, I just quickly and informally gave you uh, 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 small doses of the successful principles that I talked about earlier. H, have a teachable point of view. Each of you have unique experiences that, when leveraged, can produce amazing results. Introduce ideas based on uplifting values. That's the key to being a leader. That's the key of being great and persistent with perseverance. That is, never give up. Persistent means finishing what one has started, keeping on despite obstacles, Staying on task. Perseverance. That's the daily decision of not giving up. It's about mustering your will to perform in the face of contrary impulses, such as boredom, tedium, frustration, difficulty, temptation to do something easy and perhaps more pleasurable. Let's move on and let's talk about the grip. Being in control. That is management of goals, resources, interfaces, and performance. Mansion of goals. What I like to talk about here and mention is creating a line of sight of goal from the organization level, process level, and job performer level. That's how you create organizational alignment. Resource management, that is managing the five resources to link budgets to strategy. Interface management. A study was recently done to dispel the myths that the reason why organizations are, are, don't execute their strategy is that there is no alignment. Well, what the study ex exposed was that's a myth because there is alignment. The problem is that they can't depend on others and other, other people and other resources and other, part, and other departments to do their job. In other words, that work gets done does not get done in the organization vertically. It gets done horizontally cross-functionally, okay? And so that's where interface management is, becomes very, very important. Performance management. Use of the tools such as the balanced scorecard to link performance to draft strategy and hold people accountable. This slide underlines the value of being a strategic hustler. Only 10% of organizations execute their strategy. Recently, that's about maybe up to 13%, but this is after almost 25 years. 
dig a little deeper, you discover that between 65 to 85 percent of organization transformations fails. The most alarming fact to me is that these percentages have changed minimally in decades. To add fuel to the fire, during my career I've had the opportunity to sit in on a number of strategy setting workshops and have relished the, the spirited debates, you know, the, the by Jove I think I've got it and aha moments of breathtaking clarity and of course the ever present jugs of coffee and gourmet cookies. The freshly minted strategy emerging from these often grueling sessions is justifiable a pride evoking achievement, however, producing this document is a far cry from actually living and breathing it day in and day out. But to succeed in today's business world, that's precisely what we must do. That strategy must be brought to life with the unmistakable clarity necessary for everyone in the organization to act on it each and every day. Let's face it, okay? we have to get our hustle on. Because in today's world of globalization, competition in your industry has significantly increased. Thus, it is vital to execute your strategy being a leader who is upfront, who's flexible, upfront, and in control. Therein lies the challenge. Therein lies the challenge. Being able to break down the vision barrier, the people barrier, and the management barrier, and the resource barrier to execute on strategy. In closing, these three leaders encompass what being a strategic hustler is all about. My good friend, the late great Stuart Scott, Mr. Booyah himself, have the courage to meet the demands of your reality, whatever it is. John Holm, don't be afraid to create a healthy and new growth to excellence. Everybody wants things to be better, but nobody wants things to be different. Is that true? I don't think so. I think if you step back and you peel the onion, it's really the leadership's job to make sure that people understand the change and how it's going to impact them and how the organization is going to help them to be successful in that new environment. And one of the arguably the best basketball player in the world, Michael Jordan, a good, another good friend of mine, no one ever really fails. They just discover ways that don't work. That concludes my presentation. Uh, I now open the floor for question and answers. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Harper. And folks, we are now open for question and answers. If you have any questions, you can either put it in the chat box, question box, or you could raise your hand. There's a hand icon available on the webinar console. So if you click on it, you will be able to speak to the uh, to Dr. Uh, Dr. Harper, so let me go straight to the <coughs> question box. <coughs> Sorry. The first question, what are the paths a digital vision may take, doctor? Okay, the, the, the parts that a digital vision may take, the, the, it, 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 really, it, it really varies, okay? I, I've worked with companies, and what I've done is I've sort of categorized them into to, to, to five areas, okay? And, and so those five, five areas include um, uh, the, the, a path to create a, a great you know, online and offline ex, uh, experience. Okay? That's one path. Another path would be to create, have a, a complete digital process from start to finish. Okay? Another path could be data-driven interactions. Another path could be unleashing digital logic. And another path is the digital supply chain. Now, I can't give you specifics because, you know, these are strategic initiatives, and so I, I can't, you know, be sharing, you know, corporate uh, 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 secrets, but those are, if I were to categorize those, those would be the, the, the five different paths of the digital enterprise. Great question. <clears throat> okay, Doctor, we have another one from Mr. Nival Gallant. The question is, you say quite rightly that leaders have made no real impact on strategic execution and growth for many years. How long would it take to develop an effective strategic hustler? Although many people repeat the words of Stuart Scott and John Ron, they speak them but don't demonstrate that they do them. Is there something else needed like attitude change? 
Exactly, and, and that's a great question. And that's when I, that goes back to the strategic thinking enablers. That's why I talk about a strategic attitude, okay, a strategic aptitude and a strategic altitude. Because again, you know, that attitude that says, okay, this is what I want to do, okay? And so now the aptitude is, okay, you, you're going to have to have skills, knowledge, and abilities to do those things, as we saw in the elements uh, of change. And then last but not least is the altitude, okay? How far do you want to go? Okay, you know, my, my, I have a saying is that, you know, people say think outside the box. And so I, I, I always say, I always challenge them, I say, why? Why must there be a box? You know, why not aim for the universe? Because if you ever miss, you'll land among the stars. All right, doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we have another one. Does the leadership and management behaviors and practices differ based on the digital path a company? Oh yes, I, yes they do. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, sir. I mean, uh, uh, do you want me to repeat the question? Uh, Dr. Harper, do you want me to repeat the question? It's, does the leadership and management behaviors and practices differ based on the digital path the company takes? Could you elaborate? Hello? Yes, doctor, can you hear me? Hello, Dr. Frank, can you hear me? Now I heard you. I beat the question because I didn't. It, you just sort of you went out on me. Okay, doctor. Let me repeat. Uh, can you hear me now? So the the question is: Does the leadership and management behaviors and practices differ based on the digital path a company takes? Yes. Yes. When what I've shared with you is just a framework. It's just a framework. Okay, and and, and 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 it's my argument that that framework can be universally applied, to, you know, to you know any kind of transformation. But where it has to differ is in terms of his application, his execution. So, for example, let's take the 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 behavior: look to change and challenge the status quo. Okay, well, that is the underlying reason for any type of transformation. We want to make things better. In other words, we want to create a healthy and new growth to excellence. But how do you do that? How do you do that? You know, if, if I'm a leader in Saudi Arabia, my, my approach may be different, you know, depending on the different companies that I work with. If I'm a leader in, in Qatar, that may be different. If I'm a leader in, you know, in, in Pakistan, it may be, it, it, yeah, it, 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 yes, I have to do that. But in terms of the execution, in terms of what's the strategy that I use to implement that, that's going to differ. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. That really brings us towards the end of the webinar. Any concluding remarks that you would like to give before we dismiss out? Yes, um, I, um, I on your screen there is the last page uh, where is contact information. Uh, um, I, I spoke about you know the text. The, the text is available uh, at the ebook store. It's right there on the page. Uh, if there are any other questions that people need to send to me, a free email box, that, that, you know, email information, any one of those addresses there, or give me a and, and I, within you know, you know, 24 to 48 hours. Thank you very much. I really want to thank you, Dr. Harper, on behalf of the Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship. Once again, thank you very much for a very, very intriguing presentation, an interesting one. And thank you for sharing this valuable information through the platform of uh, Miles uh, live webinars. And thank you all of those who participated in this webinar and for your questions. We are recording this webinar, so please stay tuned to webinar.mile.org to access the recorded versions and equally to learn about the upcoming webinars. With that note, we would like to end and conclude. So you all have a good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are calling from. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.